Hi, my name is Oktai. Welcome to today's video about the superconductor AK99. This is a nice picture of this uh, new substance. It was found by the scientist uh, Super, Super Lee Ji Hong Kim, Yong Bang Kwon, in 1999. That's why it has the number 99. The letters AK are from the last names of Lee and Kim. This is a lead appetite. It is doped with copper ions. There's a, a big group of compounds, um, appetites. One of these compounds is hydroxyapatite, which is the inorganic compound in uh, bones and teeth. This is the formula of LK99, lead, copper, phosphate, oxide. X is uh, very important. It has to be between 0 0.9 to 1.1, which means about 10% of the lead ions are replaced by copper ions. It's a non-stoichiometric compound. According to the scientists, it has a Critical temperature of above 127 degrees Celsius, and you can see by the formula it is, uh, these are all uh, very cheap elements. And according to this uh, scientist, uh, this LK99 is a superconductor at room temperature and ambient pressure one bar. This is the synthesis of LK99. First step is the synthesis of lanarkite at 725 degrees Celsius from lead oxide and lead sulfate, and you get uh, lead sulfate oxide. Second step is a synthesis of copper 1 phosphide from the elements at 550 degrees Celsius. And the third step is a synthesis of AK99 from lanarkite plus copper phosphide plus oxygen in a redox reaction in a vacuum tube at 925 degrees Celsius. This is the product K99 plus byproduct sulfa. This is a new work of Kapil Kumar, Karan, Yogesh Kumar, and Avana from India. They confirmed the synthesis of AK99, but according to their work, there is no uh, superconductivity of AK99 at room pressure, uh, room temperature and uh, normal pressure, uh, but only diamagnetism. Uh, these are predicted parameters A and C from the Rietveld refinement, which is an X-ray diffraction refinement technique, versus the experimental data, which is here in yellow. And you can see for lead appetite, uh, the numbers, uh, predicted numbers, uh, differ much from the experimental uh, data from Lee and Kim. But for the LK99 compound, uh, the numbers match very well. And um, these scientists uh, predicted predict a volume reduction with the copper doping by just 0.818%. Experimental uh, value was 0.48% uh, volume reduction. And this is the structure of AK99, which is a modified lead appetite. There is a column structure. There are two kinds of um, lead ions. The outer lead ions in this picture are uh, black. And in gray, the inner lead ions. Uh, between them are the phosphate ions. And in the center, there are oxide ions. But they occupy just one a quarter of the available spots. And the doping with uh, copper causes a volume reduction by 0.48%. And according to another theoretical work, um, the copper ions cause stress. That's why the oxide ions uh, prefer the maximum distance from the copper ions. There's another picture of the structure. Um, outer lead ions are replaced partially by the copper ions. Here you can see the different sizes. The copper ion is much smaller than the lead ion. And this causes a shrinkage and stress. And this produces quantum wells, and this uh, gives LK99 superconductivity, according to, uh, to the uh, Lee and Kim. Uh, this is a model, a uh, Hubbard model in 2D. It was invented by John Hubbard in 1963. It describes the transition between conducting and insulating systems. There are two uh, different effects. One is the on-site interaction. The other one is tunneling. Uh, in this model, U is the repulsive energy or double occupation of a site, and T is the hopping parameter for tunneling. This is a nice comparison of cuprate versus nickelate. Uh, this delta is the charge transfer energy, and the U is the Coulomb energy, which is the electric potential energy. Uh, cuprates have a charge transfer insulator bands from electron hopping within the unit cell. Uh, the nickelates have Mott Hubbard 
insulator bands from electron hopping between the units cells. This can be tuned uh, by chemistry of uh, anion and cations. Um, this means um, you can uh, also make uh, superconductors from nickelate, for example, uh, lanthanum uh, nickel oxide is a superconductor, but only at high pressures. This is the structure of perovskite. Um, the name perovskite has two meanings. The first meaning is the name of the compound, calcium uh, titanium oxide. And perovskite is the uh, name of this uh, general group of compounds with this structure, ABX3. Uh, A are, are the uh, green ions, B e are the blue ions, X is the uh, red ions, uh, typically oxi oxide. And there's a new uh, work of Mot Motoharu Kit Kitatani and his colleagues from Japan. Uh, they made a comparison of cuprates, nickelates, and palladates. And they, uh, their work predicts a high temperature superconductivity for palladates that have a PDO2 layers in their structures. They are like uh, perovskite structures. And uh, um, these scientists predict one candidate that is very promising. That's rubidium strontium palladium oxide. There's another work from uh, Kaizen Guo and colleagues from China. Uh, they produced also AK99, but um, according to these scientists, it has uh, just semiconductor-like pro properties. And the half levitation is uh, due to ferromagnetism. This is a, a work of uh, Kun Tao and colleagues from China. Um, there are two types of uh, um, lead ions in AK99. And according to these scientists, uh, the oxide ions are very important for the flat bands. And they propose an annealing in ox uh, oxygen atmosphere, add more oxygen to the structure and they predict a better superconductor than LK99 uh, by this method. This is an uh, original picture of uh, Lee and Kim of a sample of LK99. Um, there's another scientist, Ivan Mokin, and his colleagues from U United Kingdom. They also synthesized LK99, but I could not, uh, could not observe uh, levitation or superconductivity. However, they found uh, small particles with strong magnetic response. And the analysis showed that these particles were iron inclusions. There's another work of uh, Dimitri M. Korotin and colleagues. Um, they used the density functional theory calculation for, uh, for LK99. In this picture, LK99 is a metal like uh, compound at the left. At the right, that's uh, lead appetite without co copper. And according to this work, uh, orbitals of oxide and copper are important. There are two flat bands at the Fermi level that were confirmed. Fermi level is a thermodynamic work that is required to add one electron to the structure. This is a nice animation of the electric motor. There was an interesting question uh, to my former video. Um, if you had a superconductor at room temperature, what um, would be the consequences for electric motors? And I think it would be a, a big a benefit for electric motors. Because especially for motors that need to run uh, continuously, because you have no resistance and no waste heat. And there's already a German company that is Festo. You can Google if you're interested in this uh, topic. Uh, just Google Festo Supramotor, then uh, you will find the website. At the top right, you can change to English, English language. And as always, I will add uh, links to these uh, new papers in the description field of my video. Uh, that was today's video about LK99 Superconductor. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.